In this training video, we're going to be looking at level 2 of our infantry doctrine, buddy team tactics. With the introduction of another person to your gameplay, there comes a different set of responsibilities, as you're no longer looking out for just yourself, but also your oppo too, short for opposite number. Having your oppo nearby decreases stress and the amount of angles you would usually have to cover if you were on your own. Not only that, but operating in a buddy team increases morale, as you have company by your side during battle which in turn and time increases confidence and unit cohesion. Roles A buddy team is the smallest unit that we work in and consists of two soldiers, one on point and one on the six. Point is the leader of the buddy team, responsible for frontal security and land navigation and is the main voice of the buddy team. Six is the follower of the buddy team, responsible for rear and flank security and uses information from the person on point to adapt and cover alternative angles. Alternating roles happen frequently and are necessary to maintain the flow between a buddy team. It's important to be competent at being on both point and on the six. Friendly fire. If you see a friendly point in a gun, make sure you pass behind them so that you don't create friendly fire. Even if they're not currently shooting, they could open fire at any time. Backblast is common when someone is using an anti-tank weapon system or rocket propelled grenade and a friendly is too close to the rear of the weapon. Ensure you're out of the range of the backblast and that you communicate backblast before you fire your weapon. Communication When calling contact we use AD, ADD, which stands for Alert, Direction and Description. You may want to pause the video to look at the example shown on screen. Visual is used when we are visual on a potential enemy, but have not recognised if they are friendly, enemy or civilian. Contact is used when you currently or about to be engaged in a firefight. Danger close is used when enemies are within grenade throwing range, where close quarters combat, hand to hand combat or an immediate danger is present. Reloading is used when you need to reload or are currently in the process of reloading. Gun green is used when your weapon system is fully functional. Magazine is used when you need someone to pass you another magazine. Gun red is used when there is an issue or malfunction with your weapon system, be this jammed or overheated. Prior to battle, clearly define to each other what the plan is, what the objectives are, direction of travel is, footholds and what equipment you should both be using. Our copy means, did you understand? Copy, Roger and 10-4 means, I understand. Wilco is short for will comply. It means, I understand what you said and can comply with your given order. Cannot comply means, I understand what you said but cannot comply with your given order. Say again means, I didn't hear or understand your order. A common mistake I see when watching people operate is not declaring intent. The meaning of intent is what you intend on doing or plan on doing. I think we should go over to that building on the east. Not only allows your buddy to understand what you intend on doing, but also allows them the opportunity to disagree with you. Your oppo may see an imminent threat that you may not, and opening the conversation to the intended direction of travel allows information to be shared and trust to be gained. It's paramount that you limit the amount of communication you use. Make communication clear and concise, and use as few syllables as possible during combat. Mills on me is more effective communication than Mills, could you possibly come to me, please? Is what you're saying relevant to your squad or those around you? If it's relevant to your squad, then use your radio. If it's relevant to those around you, then use local communications. It's important for a buddy team to have trust with each other. A common mistake I see when watching a buddy team operate is a lack of trust between the unit, which leads to physically looking at each other to see what the other person is doing. This is often due to a lack of communication and a lack of trust. The more experience the unit has, the more trust and cohesion is present. Each individual knows they can rely on each other to cover angles and to suppress the enemy during a manoeuvre without the need of physically looking at them. You neglect the angles you're supposed to be covering if you're physically and constantly checking where your oppo is. In real life, I'd be able to place my hand on your shoulder to squeeze your shoulder or feel you move. This is a form of communication we don't have in a video game, 
However, a wall slide replicates this form of communication and allows the team to maintain all around security. The effect created is that every time point moves or stops, the team moves and stops moving at the exact same time. Six can continue walking backwards into the L shape created where the person on point and the wall meet. This can only be done on a smooth wall. Cornering. A high low is usually used when you want added firepower on a corner and to safely position yourselves to avoid friendly fire. Point will crouch, staying low, while scanning the ground level. Six will stand, staying high, while scanning the high ground. The reason point takes a step back is to allow room for your gun, in the event that you need to return to cover. Some games allow you to clip your gun into the wall, and others don't allow you to aim down sights when you're too close to a wall. A pie is usually used to carefully look around a corner. Point will remain crouched, slowly moving around the corner, while checking every single potential danger area or shooting position. It's important that you don't rush this, and that you take your time. After about two thirds of your manoeuvre, remember to check previously scanned areas, as enemies may appear there, even though you've previously cleared it. Six remains on rear and flank security, whilst also extending the arc of fire to the oblique. A peek is usually used to have a quick look around a corner and gain reconnaissance. Point will rapidly move out and then back into cover. Six remains on rear and flank security, whilst also extending the arc of fire to the oblique. The first move to cross in a danger area is Point will stop on the corner of the danger area and provide overwatch, communicating first security set. The second move is Six communicates that Point is last man, crosses the danger area, stops on the opposite side and provides overwatch, communicating second security set. The final move is, Point crosses the danger area, passes 6 on second security, communicates that 6 is last man, and reassumes Point. Air behind cover. Security can be divided into two, as you now have your Oppo covering your other angles. The angles that you learnt in level 1, infantry individual tactics, still apply. While using bait and kill, we've got two roles, bait and kill. As bait, your role is to survive, or suppress the enemy by fire and keep their attention on you. Returning fire isn't necessary, as this may get you killed, especially if you don't have fire superiority. As the kill, your role is to kill the enemy as fast as possible. It's important that when the pair's behind cover, you win the initial firefight. In order to win the firefight, you must return a high volume of suppressing fire towards your enemy. It's paramount to have direct and indirect suppressive fire at a high volume, even if it's inaccurate. Once you've won the initial firefight, and you have fire superiority, one person can maintain the volume of suppressive fire to maintain fire superiority. This then opens up the possibility to fire a manoeuvre. Once one is firing, the other can manoeuvre. We'll always attempt to manoeuvre our shooting positions further and wider, to a point where we we'll begin to flank our enemy. You must take into consideration the depth and timing of your flank, as your oppo is under fire. When you're in a flanking position, use flashbangs and grenades to disorient the enemy. It is then up to the flanking element to assault and fight through, or beyond, contested enemy ground. Once the contested ground is clear of enemies, the opposite number will take the route that is already cleared. The reason we take the route that is already cleared is because it's proven ground that we know is already clear of IEDs, mines, trip wires, or enemy hostile forces. Roles may switch, and in the event that you find the enemies change targets, alternate roles. The bait now becomes the kill, and the kill becomes the bait. Breaching Breaching is a process we take to enter a room. We use breaching techniques to start the enemy that may be inside, take advantage of a single moment, entering with maximum speed and violence of action. En route to a room or building, look along the walls for any windows that need to be covered or that you can throw grenades into. A regular stack is communicated as stack or stack up. Both units are positioned on one side of the entry point. You maintain the element of surprise, but you can only see into one side of the room. 
A split stack is communicated as a split stack, an individual's positioned on both sides of the entry point. You lose the element of surprise what's crossing the doorway, but you can see into both sides of the room. Before you enter a room, you want to prepare it first, especially if you already know the enemies occupy the room. Aim a lethal grenade to the back of the room. This will force the enemies towards your breach, into your sectors of fire, out of their piece of cover, or eliminate them. Aim a tactical grenade at the front door, at the point you're entering, where you would imagine a doormat to be. The reason we put them just inside the door is because that's where the enemy are looking. Flashbangs temporarily impairs the enemy's vision and hearing. Smoke grenades create a larger area for you to enter. A hook is when you move 180 degrees around the door. You have the opportunity to scan the room, and you're moving from the known to the unknown. A cross is when you cross over the door as you enter. You don't have an opportunity to scan the room, and you're moving from the known to the known. Leading by fire is when you shoot your weapon as you perform the breach, eliminating any potential threats. You'll also immediately lose the element of surprise. If you're on point, communicate your direction of travel, either left or right. This is then followed by a countdown or instruction to breach on bang. If you're on the six, adapt and enter the opposite side. Never stop in a doorway as this creates a fatal funnel where there's a serious danger to life. The formula of entry is look into the corner while scanning the room, move into the corner, move a third of the way up the wall and find cover or take a knee. Once you're inside the room, your sectors of fire are if you went left, your sector of fire is from the front to the right. If you went right, your sector of fire is from the front to the left. You now have interlocking sectors of fire. Whilst breaching, you want to have constant communication on enemy locations, potential danger areas, stairs, doorways, windows, potential shooting positions, or explosives. To completely clear a room, you must communicate left clear, right clear, room clear. A rolling T is usually used inside or outside, when moving down an alleyway, side corridor, or coming up to a T junction or crossroad. We see more around our partner's corner than we do our own. If you're on the left, cover the right, and if you're on the right, cover the left. Move side by side in a line formation parallel, as if a metal pole is connecting you both. When you reach the end of the corridor or alleyway, hook the corners. As a rule of thumb, you want to get up and down stairs as quickly as possible. And as an immediate contradiction to that, use the saying, slow is smooth and smooth is fast. If you're on point, check the rear high for any overhang or balcony. Once rear high is clear, cover the most open and immediate danger areas. If you're on the six, cover rear low. Once rear low is clear, cover front high. You should now be comfortable operating a buddy team. We hope that you've learned something valuable from this level of training that will assist you and your oppo in becoming better at playing your games together and giving you both a better overall gaming experience. If you have any feedback, either positive or negative, about this level of training, please leave a comment down below. And if you like these kind of training videos or want to see more tactical team oriented gameplay, then I invite you to like, share and subscribe. Until next time, take it easy.